Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. We are live. All right, I think I've got everything in place here. And just waiting for video stream to come up. says we're streaming here, but I don't have video feed. If anybody's watching, can you let me know that you see something or not? No, I do not have a camera. All right, we're going to stop the stream and restart it here in just a minute. All righty. Looks like we're streaming now. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, yeah, I didn't want to kick in at first. All right. All right. So, Looks like we're streaming now. I'm not sure what happened mute my own voice so I don't hear myself talking. All right, so give everybody time to start getting in here. Okay, so a little shift from earlier when we're doing the Paragon project. This one is uh, going to be based off of my simple multiplayer. And first, I'm going to start off with I'm going to give a quick demo of what actually comes in it for those who decide they want to kick in and throw ten bucks my way and get a free copy or get not a free copy, but get a copy of this for for ten dollars. And what happens is when you hit play, when you first download it, install it, open up the project and everything, you've got the plugins all set up then you hit play do it as a standalone and you see it'll come up there you get a basic menu and notice it says go connect to steam dummy well it does use some steam architecture in here so if you're not connected to steam and you don't have steam running it will show this so what I'm going to do is quickly exit game and I am going to turn on Steam and hopefully I won't have 1500 downloads going at the same time so we shall see I'll just have to pause them all and resume that them at a later date now I will be adding some more functionality of the Steam architecture later to this but what I plan on doing is releasing and hopefully this game that I'm working on for this video series and yes it is downloading we are not going to download oh it's downloading an update for Space War okay for those who are not familiar with it what happens is when when you're playing in a developer app ID um, it will show up to your, your friends in Steam that you're actually playing Space War so if you're on my Steam friends list and you see me playing Space War, it's I'm working on a, on a game that's using this simple multiplayer template because I don't have a Steam developer ID for this application yet. It costs $100. I won't get into all that. But, um, yeah, that's why I've been trying to sell off copies of this. If I could sell 10 copies of it, then that'll give me enough cop uh, money. Actually, 11 because, you know, PayPal... Besides, they want to keep some of the money. Um, 
so I'm going to go ahead and I'm so not worried about this. I don't have the Unreal Dev Kit installed currently. I'm not sure if that's going to matter or not, but let's go ahead and try hitting play now and let's see if it sees that I am connected to Steam. So, again, whenever you go into the simple multiplayer, I've you see that I've got um, the Steam avatar and Steam name in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Instead of saying go connect to Steam dummy, it actually sees your Steam avatar and username. When this game does go live on Steam, then it will use a lot more of the Steam architecture and that's going to be useful for inviting friends to come play and so forth. Now, if we go to single player mode, well, currently right now, it's going to have to compile shaders because it's the first time running everything. But you just go into a lobby map and you get your red character instead of the normal white UE4 mannequin. And okay, lovely. That's it. But you hit escape key and you can either resume game or you can go back to the main menu. Select multiplayer. And if you're trying to find a game that's already hosted, then you can hit find lobby. It will search to see if anybody else is already got one hosted and after a few seconds it'll give up um, if it doesn't find one or you can host and create your own server and you can call it whatever you want and then click the make button it'll create the server and then go into the initial first map so the initial first map is going to be the lobby map we're gonna change that here for this project but I'm gonna go ahead and exit game now one thing I have done is I have loaded in the animation starter pack and I've added in Polygon Pirates. And this is not a free asset here. Animation starter pack is, but um, it was mentioned earlier that it would be cool to have a pirate version of I don't know, something like a, a Battle Royale game. It comes with a demonstration map which is pretty freaking awesome. Um, your materials you're going to need, your meshes, some particle effects and your textures there. The meshes you're gonna have a mixture of a lot of different building stuff which is cool you can use to, to make pretty cool scenery. You've got environments so you got your trees, your water, your rocks, things of that nature. Um, items which is gonna be fun also. We have pouches, bags, loot bags, uh, bottles, um, jars, parchment, gems, we have all kind of things we can use for pickups which is going to be quite handy. Um, in your props folder you're going to have more stuff like barrels, anchor, um, loot chest, cannons, and yes we can make these cannons work. Um, yeah, All kind of scenery items you can add in, doors, grave um, stones, uh, lanterns, yeah there's just so much in here. And yes, since it is a pirate theme, you're going to have skeletons and you're going to have pirates, yes. Well, what good is pirates without their ships? Well, yes. You get pirate ships. And broken down in components, so if you wanted to, you could physically make the sails work and change direction and so forth. Um, you can add the guns in separately, put the flags on. You can do all kind of stuff to, to modify the ships to make them work correctly. And you got a bunch of weapons. You got muskets and swords and daggers and yeah, even a wooden sword. Um, pistols, rifles, uh, yeah. So you got weapons here we can work with. We got building material stuff we can work with. I'm actually going to go ahead and load the demonstration map. It may take a few minutes to get loaded in because this is the first time I've loaded it since uh, creating this project just now and whoever made this map um, the Polygon uh, Pirates is by Cinti Studios and available through the uh, the marketplace if you're not familiar with these assets yeah they're pretty good got almost all of them still waiting on the war pack and I'm still waiting on the the cowboy pack but <clears throat> yeah so we're gonna let it compile its shaders real quick. It's only a couple hundred. It's not like it's a big deal. Um, 
But as you can see, you've got a starting town here. You've got another island there, all over there. Ships already out in the water. And as soon as the, the shaders are done compiling, you'll be able to see a little bit nicer detail to it. And what I'll probably end up doing is for now, I will start off with the um, with this map as a you know a demo map, Ex experiment with, play around with, throw some NPCs out, start doing some combat, start killing some stuff. But I wanted to show you around this map really quick, and yeah, I absolutely love it. They did a great job on this map, and a pretty good job on these assets as well. All right, just about done with the shaders. And what I could actually do is I'm going to fly around the map in this mode right now. Um, and generally, whenever you don't have a... Um, I'll see if I can get it right on the first try. Is to set it up to where I can play it without a an actual player spawn so I can fly through the map while it's operational. All right, finish with these shaders. There we go. So my world settings, I don't have anything for my game mode override. And I'm going to play in selected viewport. So let's try setting it as third person game mode. And default pawn class, we're going to change it to none. No, nope, not going to let me do it. Alright, so we'll change it back to player underscore base. And we'll just fly around the map in this mode. Alright, so you got this main island over here, and you've got um, pirate ships. And this is, I guess, like a hero ship here also. You got cannons all mounted on the side, cannons there. You got another ship hiding over there which we'll take a look at that island as well. But you've got a series of buildings, places to walk around. It'd be a great place to set up a market and vendors. And then we'll slide over here to this island. And it's not really a huge map, but there's a lot in this small map. So that's what makes it really cool. So you go past this ship over here into this cove, and you got a little pirate outpost here. and then fly over to this island and that was our main island we left from over there you've got uh, this little village over here seen as better days but okay let's set up a building you could set up some more vendors over here as well and a little shanty town with a good place for vendors and you got a shipwreck over here guess I shouldn't show too much of the island give you something to uh, to do and explore around with Got a nice little mansion set up over here. And then we'll check out this last little bit, and then we'll get started. Um, right now, this is a fresh project. I haven't done anything, but just load it in, and you see what I see. All right. So, with all that, let's get started. And pretty sure there is probably not a player start on this map so the first thing I'm gonna to want to do is go ahead and add a player start and we'll do that right over here like we just came in on this little skiff and we are going to player start and we want to rotate it around so we're facing the village and we're going to go ahead and another thing I want to do is I want to start cleaning up some of this because you got a lot of stuff that's in a one big root folder and I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create a folder, make one called map stuff, grab the fog, the light source, I'm going to go ahead and grab the player start, well I'm not going to grab the player start just yet grab these main items right here and drag those into map stuff and create another folder
all buildings and I'm for now I'm just gonna grab everything and shove it in there even though there's more than just buildings we can sort that out later I just want to get all this stuff out of the root folder so we have a little something nicer to look at and we just got the one player start for now but let's go ahead and add three more I don't know why but I like to have four player starts when I first come into a map now these could be actually spread out put somewhere else so you have random starts all over the map but for now we're just gonna do this and we're gonna go ahead and create a folder called start locations and I'm gonna go ahead and move all of the starts into that and again we're clean and clear so if we actually hit play now we're going to come in here as our player character and I don't know if you noticed but um, for some reason this only happened since I've started doing 4.19 is I still have a mouse cursor whenever I do play in this mode so we have our regular UE4 character that I've just created a new character color for um, another thing we can do here is and I hate to get into this part because well I'm gonna to have to go into a file that um, is the core of what actually makes the simple multiplayer but I want to go ahead and make it so this is our default map for single player and multiplayer so you guys see nothing you see nothing you know nothing okay so yeah try to move quickly through here so you don't see all my guts compile save and out alright so what that's gonna do now is if we go to our maps folder and go back to the main menu map and playing a standalone game it's going to simulate that we're actually playing the game normally mm, coffee good stuff all right so go into multiplayer host a game my damn game and we're going to go ahead and make and it'll go into multiplayer and it will there we go so now we can run around, but it's going to be rather boring if we're running around playing as the UE4 mannequin in a pirate map. What are we, pirate robots? Yeah, I don't think so. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is I want to start getting ready to utilize a character that will be more suitable for this environment. So we're going to go to main menu and exit game. Everything works lovely. So let's take a look in the characters folder we have two things we have creatures one of them being a fish we don't really want to be a fish and we have a shark lovely now technically they do have their own animations but it's just an in-place animation so if you want to make them move, you're going to have to give them movement. Pretty much in the same way you would with anything else, but... Um, and they don't have an attack animation or anything like that, so... Yeah, whatever. That's cool. But we look into our people folder, and we have lots of peoples to choose from. And they're duplicated, because what it is is you've got... Um, oh, I don't know, let's find a nice little suitable first mate you got this guy and he already has a pouch on his hip I guess it's a flask of rum and this I want to use as our player character but I don't want him to have the, the pouch on his side just yet so there's another version that has it without 
and then we can manually add that in later. So, what are we going to do? Well, me being the weirdo that I am, I'm going to go ahead and go to my characters folder and players folder. Actually, let's go with um, characters folder. Let's go with a new folder called mesh. Inside this folder, I want to go ahead and grab my peoples. I am going to take the skeleton and I am going to copy it over to the mesh folder. And I'm going to rename it to poly base SK for a skeletal mesh. Or let's actually just do um, S for skeleton. Okay, so we know that this is going to be our, our skeleton that we want to use. And it's already set for humanoid rig. That's lovely. Okay, so we don't really care about our red man and our normal player base. So let's actually go down here to our mannequin animation folder and we have some basic animations. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called animations. And inside this folder is where I'm going to put these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on third person animation blueprint and I'm going to retarget and duplicate and you see it's nothing there so we can't do it just yet because we have to go into our UE4 mannequin skeleton he is in a Y pose but if we look at our skeleton here there isn't one. Oh no because we haven't assigned anything to it yet. So let's actually go ahead and do that before we start doing this. So we can go to our Polygon Pirates folder and our Peoples and this is going to take a minute so what I'm going to do is I'm going to control left click on all of the skeletal meshes and the reason why I'm going to do that will be very evident really soon. Now it sucks that there is duplicates of all these, but it is cool that we do have skeletons. So with all of the skeletal meshes selected, I'm going to right click, select skeleton, and assign skeleton. Now we have a bunch of different stuff here, but I just want to use poly underscore base underscore s and accept. And I'm going to have to do this each time for each and every stinking one of them. Now, if there's anything that one has that is not in the skeleton already, which we're not going to run into a problem with that with just doing it from one asset pack. But if you start mixing asset packs from, from this, and I do that, and I, I will actually take every single solitary one of the skeletal meshes and I'll retarget them to run off of this particular skeleton. So we're just about done. It's boring but it has to be done for efficiency. For my efficiency at least. It makes me happy. So once we get done with them then we can start looking at adjusting the skeleton. Alright, we're almost done. Alright, thank you. We are done. So now we can come over here and look at our mesh. He is in a T-pose. That's not going to work for us. Our UE4 mannequin is in a Y pose. How do we fix this problem? Well, we're going to select rig 
slight humanoid rig. And then I'm going to grab his upper arm and I'm going to rotate that up 50 degrees. And his forearm, I'm going to rotate it back 30 degrees. Do that for the other side. Bring it up 50, forearm back 30. I'm going to modify pose, use current pose, and save. Now, when we come over here to our animation folder, right click on our third person animation blueprint, go to retarget and duplicate. Now we're good to go. Now, nothing is showing up here just yet. And that's because we don't have anything set for him just yet. So, let's actually look at the mesh one more time. But you see that we have this right here. So, we want to preview mesh. We want to apply, but let's actually, because I want to be different, let's assign one of the skeletons to it. This guy. And apply to asset. And now we have this set. Hit save. Now when we go to retarget, we should see something. Hey, hello, Viking, and welcome to Discord. Now we have something over here. Now, I don't want to use third person in the name of it, so right here I can select to replace, and I'm going to replace third person underscore with polygon. We'll just do poly underscore, and we want to change the folder of where it's going to, so we'll click there, click on our characters, animations and OK. Now we can click on retarget. And that's going to retarget all of these animations over and it's already moved us to that that folder. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save all. And I want to go ahead and I want to go back to the map we were on before, which is the demonstration map. So where we're going with this is we can now go over to our player blueprint and player base. We go into it and if we look at our viewport, select our mesh, we can now select any of those that we want from that asset pack because we've just retarded that entire skeleton. Let's see if it actually works. So if I wanted to do the skeleton, and then do the animation class as a poly animation blueprint. There we go. Is animating. If I want to select the governor's daughter, there you go. Um, so you can select any of those now, and they're going to work. And actually, let's utilize this guy right here. And I'm going to go ahead and compile and save. Now, player base is going to now call this guy. And he needs to go there. I'm going to close them for now. So now if we hit to play, and I can actually play in selected viewport. As you can see, we are now able to run around and jump just like we did with the MRO4 mannequin. But now we're more of a piratey dude. So it looks more authentic. Yeah. So as we're exploring around town, we can actually look like we belong to this town instead of some mechanized monstrosity. Not saying the UE4 mannequin is not pretty, I'm just saying it don't fit. So there we go. Um, we can do this and we can now run around and play, four people can join, eight people can join, a hundred people can join, whatever. I think I've got it set to 50, but 50 people could join this game right now and we'd all be running around and look like this character. So, until we actually have a character selection screen, this is what we're stuck with until we decide to actually go into player base and select mesh or skeletal mesh. <coughs> and let's go with gentleman bear. 
compile and save so yeah he looks just like the same thing we were just on but he doesn't have the pouch on his hip so and it would be cool it would be all right stable and everything else we could all play but it'd be kind of boring if there's nothing to do besides walk around and look at stuff yeah you can come over here and jump in the water but you just go in the water you can't swim you can't drown you can't do anything you can't whack each other with a stick so we're gonna need to fix that we need to hurt some and like we did in the paragon project we need to be able to come up with a way to use weapons now I added the animation starter pack what good is that gonna do well it came with that it's an animation blueprint and it's gonna be primarily for a rifle and that's cool um, we don't currently have any melee attacks right now I will import some animations that I've got stored that will work but for right now if we were to use this animation blueprint it's only going to work for another copy of the UE4 mannequin so just like we did before with this animation starter pack we need to go into this mannequin go into this skeleton we need to re-rig it for select humanoid rig and we need to do the same thing we did before is take his upper arm rotate it up 50 degrees take his forearm rotate it back 30 do the same thing for the other side up 50 forearm back 30 we want to modify a pose use current and that should have us all set up we can just save that now and I'm just gonna do another save all so we can actually go to the animation starter pack and we can right click on the huge named thing here select our poly base they're both in T poses that's lovely we don't want this UE4 ASP underscore hero TPP and yeah that's just a little bit too much so I'm gonna type that in here UE4 ASP underscore hero TPP underscore and I'm gonna replace all that with rifle underscore for now that should be good enough and I want to change the folder where it's going to to our characters animation folder and OK and then retarget it's going to retarget all of those animations and it's going to give us a second animation blueprint and I'm going to go ahead and do save all what good is that going to do us well it gives us eh, crap there's still a bunch of them with third person name in it but oh well we can actually now get rid of I'm not gonna get rid of the uh, animation starter pack but technically we can actually get rid of the the original UE4 mannequin completely we don't need him anymore we don't need his animations anymore we're good to go but what this animation right here does is it gives us the ability to use a rifle you have um, idle rifle hip um, and there's no aim I don't think on this one but to kind of give an ex you know a visual representation of that if we look at our viewport we can see our mesh he's doing this normal unarmed animation so if we change the animation class over to rifle animation now he's holding a rifle from the hip and we can work with that but let's go ahead and put him back into the normal animation and what's going to happen is we're going to run around and we're going to use that unarmed animation until we physically have a weapon to use and since for right now we don't have any weapons set up let's actually take a look at the weapons here now these weapons are all static meshes well that could be okay but it also can be a problem because they are static meshes there's no skeletal mesh attached to them and 
weapons tend to like to be um, a skeletal mesh whenever you're you're setting up sockets for a muzzle for a muzzle flash things like that um, yeah so th we may end up having to kind of fudge our way through and there's a way to do that you can actually export one of your static meshes and then we re import it again you re-import it as a skeletal mesh sometimes you can get away with it sometimes you don't we will try to utilize that so yep sorry um, we'll try to use a sword as a static mesh and see what happens we're also going to need to go ahead and create a pickup item as well we're not going to use a sword, we're going to use a, um, a rifle of some sort, so um, let's actually take a look and see what we have. We have a standard rifle here, that will be good enough. So this is our rifle, we're going to set it up as a static mesh for us to pick up, an actual pickup item. So like we were doing before in some of these other ones, in our file structure we need to go ahead and create a asset folder and inside the asset folder we want to go ahead and create a new folder called pickups now inside this pickup the first one we're going to do is a blueprint class an actor and rifle underscore one Make sure to rifle one underscore pickup pu. So as we're looking at it, we have an empty scene here. We need to first off drag your punk ass over here so you quit being a pain in the ass. And I'm going to go ahead and find the weapon that I wanted to use, which is the not the blunderbuss. We wanted the rifle zero one. Now I can go back in here and I can add component, static mesh, and there you go. It has been added. So to make it an actual pickup, I want to go ahead and rotate it to where it's laying on its side. So we'll just rotate it 90 degrees. It may or may not be sitting correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and save. And let's actually come over here to our pickups folder and let's just grab it throw it on the ground now when we go into play mode we will walk over to it where the hell did I put it I don't see it because it's not sticking out of the ground correctly so let's actually go ahead and then delete it I'm gonna put it back in here again between these trees so I know exactly where it is and you see it's not sticking out of the ground. Now I could just raise it up here and be done with it. But I don't wanna. I'm gonna drag this down so that I can get it out to there and I'm gonna go to here, unsnap it, and then I'm gonna drag it up in this the actual blueprint. So I know that it's going to lay down correctly wherever I put it. That looks good to me. So compile and save and we can go ahead and drag this back up here to the top. So now we go into play it's no problem we can see that there's an actual rifle there on the ground so what we're gonna to need to do is be able to when we walk over it we need to pick it up so we can go ahead and now add a component which is gonna be our box collision and we're gonna call this box I don't care it looks lovely and we're going to make the collision box fit the weapon itself Now I could have moved the rifle over as well. It doesn't really matter all that much. We just want it to be on the ground. We'll, we'll know this when we're actually placing it. So let's go ahead and shrink it down. We don't want it totally shrunken down. We want to be able to pick it up. We don't want to have to have homework trying to pick the damn thing up. So let's go ahead and move that up just a hair. So that looks good. Now if we actually move the rifle over, it'll actually move the collision box with it. 
So we go to our collision box. We come down over here on the right hand side to on component begin overlap and select that. Make sure we go to our event graph. We don't need you guys. You can go away. So we'll grab this and we're going to to player base which is our player character and we want to connect object to other actor and then as player base we want to at this point we want to give the uh, the player the rifle so we're going to have to set up some variables inside the uh, the player character and player base but let's continue with a couple other things here um, we're going to go ahead and add a a short delay 0 0.2 the default is going to be good enough and then we're going to destroy actor so we get rid of the rifle off the ground and it is now gone so even though we haven't connected anything to cast to player base just yet we want to go ahead and confirm that when we walk over the thing there we go it disappears and we now can build it as okay we have now picked it up so we go to our character blueprint player blueprints player base and here's where we need to start creating some variables so we pull this variable in and this first variable is going to be uh, rifle zero underscore zero one owned we're probably gonna have to change this around here a couple hundred thousand times so we just want to say yes we we now own it so compile and save that and then here we can come into our player base and we can say set on this node right here we want to set the rifle owned to true so it's telling our player character yes you now have that rifle so we compile and save and that's all we really need for this for right now now for player base one thing we're gonna have to do here is go to our mesh you look so lovely your diet worked really well um, and let's actually who did we use we used um, we didn't use the first maid I forgot who we used for the uh, I thought it was uh, the gentleman zero one there we go not that this really matters but what I want to do here is just kind of look at it I want to look at the actual skeleton we need to create a hand to hold the gun so let's go to our we can click on it here hand right and I'm going to add a socket we're going to call this main hand I always use it this way so eh, whatever and now with that main hand we want to go ahead and we want to move it a little bit you know this is just gonna be temporary we're gonna to have to make adjustments to it here soon anyway but now we have a place to actually hold the weapon so we can hit save and close that skeleton and here's where it's going to be found because I don't think it's going to work with a static mesh to hold the rifle but we have to try so we need to probably set up an event tick so that we can do stuff along this event tick since we don't want to crowd a bunch of junk that looks terrible beside it, let's come over here and let's create a custom event and we're going to call this um, 
we're going to restructure this completely later. This just has to be temporary. Rifle. Uh, we'll just say to call it something different. Well, just rifle picked up. Like I said, this variable is going to change quite a bit. So we want to get a reference to that. We want a branch node. And if we own this rifle, this variable set up by the actual pickup, then yeah, it's already set to true. So yeah, I'm totally losing myself here. It's a senior moment. Um, yeah, what we need to do is we're going to need to spawn it in, but again, I think it's going to be a problem here. Um, we may actually have to do something totally different that I don't want to do. I would rather spawn it in. So, first off, on true, let us set animation instance class. It's going to be our first step. Let's put this guy over here. And the one we want to use is the rifle animation blueprint and if it is false and we don't own that rifle then let's um, make a copy of that let's actually move this to down here run the target to there run false to there and I believe we call it poly animation blueprint so what this is going to do right off the bat as soon as we get it it's going to change our animation system and run a different animation blueprint so let's test to make sure that's going to work so as we're running around we're in our regular unarmed animation as soon as we pick up the rifle and it didn't change so um, that's because we have that there but we didn't actually connect it to our event tech. So, rifle picked up. So now we can compile and save instead of being a complete and utter dumb shit. And let's come over here. Now we are in a animation that supports using the rifle. The jump has screwed up. We can fix that later, that's easy but we now have the ability to utilize a rifle and there was a crouch animation I thought it was also working with that but at least now we can change over to uh, a different blueprint or a different animation blueprint so that we we now have the ability to, to hold the rifle correctly so now we actually need to spawn the rifle in and again we're probably going to do something temporary just for for right now so let's let's go ahead and grab this stuff I'm going to right click on it and collapse nodes rifle pickup junk so all this is doing is just making it really, really small. We can shove it off in a corner and forget about it. So let's create another custom event. And we're going to spawn the rifle. Again, this is probably not going to work because it is a static mesh. All right, so we want to spawn actor from class the class we want is the let's look for it again in here so this is probably not going to work as intended yeah 
not going to work um, because we haven't created a blueprint for it yet. We've created a pickup blueprint, but we haven't actually created a an actual weapon blueprint. So let's go to weapons and create a new blueprint. Actor rifle underscore zero one underscore BP. So now get your punk ass up there. Yes, I know I can change that. Not guana right now. So we're gonna add component static mesh and good enough for now. So we look at our player base and I'm gonna do a compile and save on here. Oh goodness, I have an error. Eat a dick. How about this? Make transform. I wasn't ready for you to be that damn picky yet. Oh no. Spawn actor none. Are you happy now? Shut up. So, okay, we've just spawned it, but we need to tell it to spawn to somewhere. Um, so we're going to have to attach to component. Attach to actor can also work, but um, need a reference to our mesh for the parent. Socket name. All right, so our socket name that we want, I know how I spelled it, so it's going to be main hand, capital M, capital H, and then we want to snap to target, or else it'll sit there at his feet. So in theory, this is going to do all that. However, I know what's going to end up happening. It's going to spawn 9 million of them because I know my luck. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in a, a do once just to kind of prepare for inevitable failure. And then hit compile and save. Now on our rifle junk, it doesn't have an output node. So all we need to do is just come into here and attach that there and there. Compile save, come back to our event graph, and now we have an output node where we can actually type in to add our spawn rifle. Now technically we could have put it in down here, but we don't want it to spawn a rifle unless we actually picked up a rifle, right? So let's see what the hell happens. Guarantee I've forgotten something. Let's do another save all. Even though I haven't made any changes to the freaking map, but whatever. See, it's already got the rifle spawned. And this happens. I'm not touching anything. All I did was try to walk, and movement got all absolute shit. And now I'm just, for no reason whatsoever, flying off into outer space. Unreal Engine 4 why do you vex me so all right so here's one of the things we're gonna have to do is I'm gonna go into this the static mesh I'm gonna scroll down and collision preset is block all and I'm gonna set it to no collision and then save because guarantee what's happening is it's detecting collision and that's part of the issue. Now the, the, the main hand and it went apeshit again. So let's look back in here again and let's make sure it's set to no collision. Can characters step on this? No. 
Compile and save. And let's see what happens this time. Gee, now we can walk normally and we can jump normally. But why the hell do we have the rifle in our hands if we haven't picked up the damn rifle yet? Do once. Start closed. Doesn't matter. Is that rifle picked up? So what's happening here is um, let's break the link off of the unarmed animation and let's actually break these links off here. That's what's actually happening is no matter what it's actually going through and utilizing the spawn rifle. So we're gonna have to break this so now the spawn rifle is only going to have to be set up just a little bit to work a little bit differently. So let's move this over here and we want to add a branch node in. And if it's true then we can do all this and we want to check to see if rifle zero one's owned. So this is actually going to perform a check to see prior to actually spawning it in and then we can actually come over here and spawn rifle it won't actually spawn if we haven't picked it up yet so let's try to compile and save play and we do not have a rifle in our hands we're not doing the animation so as soon as we walk over here we now have the rifle and we could do the animations. Yes, the rifle's in the wrong location. It looks like crap. We can fix that. Relax. Relax. It'll be okay. So, how do we fix the orientation of their rifle? It is upside down and it is completely 90 degrees. So, let's go to our player base go to our viewport and we're not going to see the rifle so for right now I'm going to close these two guys out we need to go to our character mesh and I'm going to change our skeleton back over to our just so we're using the same character and it was not the governor it was a gentleman you dumbass and I want to go ahead and preview controller just default let's actually yeah we want to be in this let's actually change it to where we're, we're using this one as our, our preview mesh um, we need to actually set him up to use a specific animation and I want to do the animation of idle rifle hip. So now we can come over to our main hand, right click, add preview asset, and we need to find our rifle. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of assets, and it's a um, rifle. Zero one. Well, there we are. And what I'm going to do is pause the animation down here. So we see, yes, it is upside down. So let's go ahead and rotate the rifle around. Let's rotate it so that it's 180 degrees, Get it pointing in the right direction. We're going to have to do some fine tuning to get it just right. So we tilt it down. That's good on here. Let's go ahead and raise it up. Move it back. All right, so we need to do some more rotating and stuff. I want to get this pretty close. Oh, that's actually not bad. So let's look at it from the side. Looks pretty level that way. Looks pretty good in the hands. 
looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and exit this. And let's play it one more time. And let's go see what happens when we pick up our rifle now. There we go. See, told you it wasn't hard. So bang, bang, bang. We now have a rifle. Yes, it's sticking to his side. Whatever, you know. I don't think people are going to be carrying a whole hell of a lot if that's the case. So we need to be able to shoot the gun. Because people often like to shoot, right? If you're going to have a gun, you might as well be able to shoot it. I don't actually see my stats here. I'm actually going to change my views around here. Let's see, my channel, I actually want to do something different here. I am trying to get to where I can see what's going on here. So we have at least one person watching right now still. There we go. So I want to see the, the the time comparison here. Been going for about an hour. So, a quick recap on what we got. We got unarmed animation. We can run around. Cool. We actually run over here and pick up this rifle. We can now go into a rifle animation. And yeah, we need to. It's nice that we can pan around this way, but that's not going to do us much good if we're trying to use a gun and shoot. So we're going to have to change to where now when I move the mouse around, it's actually going to turn the character around. And honestly, a third person view, I mean, what is this, the division? You know, third person view stuck all the damn time. So what I'm going to want to do is I want to add another camera. Be the next thing we're going to do. And I want to go to a first person mode when I'm actually playing with a weapon. So we go to our player base. We got all this lovely stuff right here. I'm going to do like we did before grab all this, right click, and collapse node, spawn a rifle 01. So again, we're just collapsing this so we can get it out of the way. So, cameras. We already have a follow camera, camera boom, and it's right there behind us. That's cool. But let's go ahead and select our mesh. We're going to add a component and we're going to add a regular camera. And we're going to call this ADS camera. Now, the ADS camera is ADS for aim down sights. So what we're going to want to do is we want to attach that camera in a way that it looks appropriate for going into a first person mode. Sorry, I had to hit my crack pipe. So the first thing I want to do, yes, I know it's pointing at our feet and everything else. I don't care. We're going to fix that now. It's connected to the mesh. So what I want to do is I want to attach this to the head literally <laughs> hey dude can you see the camera can you see it can you see it all right so let's go ahead and rotate the camera and get it in the right position first off it's turn it 90 degrees this way and 90 degrees this way and we need to move it up just a little bit and unreal engine 4 you suck anus okay stop stop moving around so we're gonna grab our camera and you see I'm only dragging in one axis and I was only dragging in one axis before just then but no it decided I want to move it in all three axes at the same time so that's right between the eyes and now let's move the camera farther forward to about here and let's bring it a little farther forward because he's got a kind of a slant He's leaning over a little bit too much. So, let's go ahead and put it back into real time. So we can see the camera sticking through his head. And compile and save. Now, 
we need to do is on our rifle picked up might be a good way to go since we're changing our animation class I'm going to check you over there, we don't need you yet so when we go into our rifle animation we need to deactivate the follow camera and at this point we need to activate the ADS camera so it's just turning one camera off and turning the other on on so now if we go back which we don't have a way of going back just yet but we're gonna go ahead and set it up in here anyway since we're here we want to deactivate the ADS camera Oh, I hate this sometimes. Deactivate the ADS camera. And let's shove you right there. Yes, I am that OCD that I actually had to do that. And we want to activate the follow camera. So now we've just done the switcheroo on our cameras. And so now when we have a rifle picked up, it is going to change our views. So let's see how bad that was screwed up. So now we're running around on a regular follow camera. Everything's good to go. And now, yeah, we're going to have to fix this a little bit because we have a few more settings to change. But at least we know that it's going to change our cameras. So from there in our event graph on our ADS camera we want to use pawn control rotation and this is where it's going to get interesting because the the pawn control rotation and I'll, I'll show you what I mean on that is now I can look around but it's not doing anything but moving the camera around you're not moving the character around the next change that you would normally do will be to run through your player base and use pawn control rotation. However, that's also going to shut us up for our unarmed. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go back into our rifle pickup junk and I'm going to move you one more time. And what we need to look at is what we're looking at here. I'm going to slide this over so we can actually read. Use controller rotation yaw. So we need to manually do this in here. So let's try add controller yaw input. So what we're, we're trying to do here is manually engage that um, control rotation yaw. And then when we come out of it, we don't want to do that. So now let's see. probably doing this backwards here um, only done this a couple times but what you have to do is you have to be able to Im enable and disable that um, controller uh, rotation y'all let's actually see if that works I'm pretty sure it's not what I wanted to do so No, that's not what I want to do. So, we want to enable or disable the, um, the pitch and the yaw, actually. But, if we look at ADS camera, we're using the pawn control rotation, and that's just going to be for the camera. 
we have to, to do that for the mesh as well. It took me a couple tries here to get it. It's been a while since I've actually had to do this. Um, here we go. Pawn. Set use controller rotation yaw. We want to set that to true. Compile and save. I believe that's it. There we go. And now we can do our left and right, but we're not doing anything with our pitch other than looking up and down, and that's okay because we're not actually going to be shooting the projectile from the muzzle. The only thing that's going to come from the muzzle of the weapon is really nothing right now because it is not a skeletal mesh. We're actually going to create a crosshair next and you're actually going to be firing the bullet or the projectile from the crosshair. So this is actually going to let you walk around, look left and right, look up and down and since we don't have a name space where your character is actually moving around with the, uh, the mouse, this is going to do for now. Just If I'm aiming up here, it's going to look like I'm still aiming right over here. It's, the left and right is going to be visible, but the up and down is not for the animations. That's something that will be addressed later, but for now, we're good to go. We need a crosshair. And the thing about it is, you can download crosshairs all over the place, but I'm going to go ahead and create a off the hip one. I'm going to create a new widget blueprint. And we're going to call this crosshair underscore W. And this is going to be our crosshair widget. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy for right now. Um, I mean, really and truly, you you can freehand something in here made out of whatever, you know, an image. So I can grab an image, throw it in here. Size is 40 by 10 let's make it 5 okay so we've got one image here that's 5 by 40 we're going to anchor that to the center of the screen and now we need to move this over to that and instead of trying to figure it out on our own we're going to use some of that fancy mathematics crap I don't like math, but it gets the job done. The X size is point is five, so our X position needs to be. Like I said, if we just did zero and zero, first off, it's in the right axis. Well, no, it's not. You can see the line there. It's not going to be zeroed out. So our vertical line needs to be the X position needs to be two point four. 5 actually it needs to be negative 2.5 negative 2.5 which is half of the 5 and then we want to do negative 20 which is half of the 40 so that's going to give us our perfect alignment for dead center on the screen so this is a temporary crosshair but you can download crosshairs all the damn time from anywhere and I'm just going to rename this to vert I'm going to copy and paste and reverse our measurements to 40 by 5 and now we can do negative 20 and negative 2.5 and that's going to give us a perfect cross dead center in the screen and we'll just call this the whore that it is horizontal so that's going to give us a perfect crosshair dead center in the middle of the screen compile save lovely go away now we can go back into our player underscore base and since we've done all this crap all right here and here let's go ahead and 
shove that over there. We're going to have to worry about the deactivation of this when we're not armed again. But for now, let's go ahead and create a widget. The widget that we want is our crosshair widget. And we want the owning player to be the get player controller. So now we need to add to viewport. So with that added to our viewport, um, we'll have to go a different route to actually get rid of it later when we're switching back and go to an unarmed status. But this isn't going to be affected by anything just yet. So let's actually look at it and see if we actually get a crosshair now. Come over here, grab our gun, and now we have a crosshair in the center of the screen. Isn't that just freaking outstanding? So we got to shoot. We got to shoot our guns. We got to be able to get around to come out. That's easy, right? And no. Yes and no. It's not that difficult, but it's not that quick. And we just wasted an hour just getting a guy to walk around a map and point a gun. A little more than that, but you get the point. So what you actually run into when you're doing that is for your weapons um, and for your actual ability to shoot. And he looks so handsome with that camera sticking through his head. Um, what we want to do is we want to add a component to the mesh. So we're going to select the mesh, add component, and literally we're going to add a scene component here, and we're going to call that our projectile spawner. With that selected, we need to, well first, it doesn't matter where we select it and move it to right now, we need to parent this to the ADS camera because wherever the camera is facing is where we want the projectiles to spawn from dead center and let's go ahead and shut off real time and let's see what happens when we zero the axis out so let's take our projectile spawner and let's actually move it out a little bit and let's turn back our real time. So it's going to spawn a projectile right there, directly in front of us, going outwards. So instead of it spawning from the weapon, like a lot of people do, it actually does this. Sorry. Compile and save. Now we have a projectile spawner. Let's do a save all, make sure everything's good and saved. So what's going to have to happen is when we fire the weapon, we need to create a new event. And we need to create a key binding. So project settings. Input and action mapping. We've already got our escape menu set up so let's go ahead and add one more button in here and we're gonna call this primary attack because we're gonna use the same button for swords or guns or whatever. So we want to use our mouse, left mouse button as our primary attack. So Let's come over here and let's do primary attack. So we do our event. We need to do a branch. And we need to see if rifle 01 is owned. 
Again, this kind of variable system is going to be set up and changed a dozen times. We just want to get started with shooting a bullet. We want to get, we want to have something happen, right? However, we don't have a muzzle flash, and we won't be able to do a muzzle flash easily because the fact that the gun is actually a static mesh, it doesn't have a socket. So we can't really create a fire event on the weapon itself. So we, if we want a muzzle flash, we're going to physically have to create another um, scene component as a spawn location for a muzzle flash. And it would have to be set up for each and every single solitary one, and it's just totally not worth it for right now. Um, we'll have to convert these uh, weapons over to a skeletal mesh later. So, if we own the rifle, and we press the left mouse button, and we own the rifle, then we want something. We want to spawn a projectile, but we don't have a projectile yet. So, let's create a blueprint class, actor, projectile base, and with that projectile base, we don't really even need a projectile and I'm gonna end up changing this around a little bit more here soon but this is just gonna be for shits and grins for right now so we can actually see a projectile coming out we need to add a component and we're just gonna add a sphere we're gonna set the size to 0 0.2 it's gonna be big don't care it's gonna be awesome basic shape material yeah we don't have a whole lot of stuff added in here so um, yeah we'll just leave this as um, cube material for right now so we'll have a nice pretty gray bullet and with this we need to add a component and we need to add a projectile movement and that projectile movement we're going to need set up, I'm going to go with, oh god, it's 3,000 by 3,000. Um, this is all going to be temporary anyway, it's going to get gone. Should bounce? No, we don't want it to bounce. Projectile gravity? Eh. We want gravity, but not that much, so we'll go with 0. Point Five. We want some gravity because you know muskets. They're, they're gonna the musket ball is gonna drop. Plus we want to see the damn thing. So um, yeah, that's good enough for now. There is no socket or anything. So compile and save. Let's close our projectile base. Let's go back to our player base, and then let's try to spawn. Let's see. Spawn actor from class. Um, spawn transform. We're going to go ahead and just do a make transform. Again, this is just going to be experimental. We're going to change this out later. And we need to projectile base. So, yeah, the location all this is actually not going to be right. Um, let's see if we can come up with a different method of getting the location. The rotation and scale. Um, attached to a component. And let's try the projectile spawner as the parent. And there is no socket name, so I can't attach a socket name. Yeah, this is probably not going to work. Um, yeah, it's probably not going to work. But 
what I'll do is I'll set up a a much better working system. Well, it's it's working. It's but it's not tracking with um, the direction we're aiming. So no matter which way we're looking, it's firing in the same direction. So that's not good. We need to fix that. Um, let's try to keep relative. So what we'll do here is in a couple minutes, I'll go ahead and end this video because we've been going for an hour and a half. And I'll take a break for a little bit and then come back. I'll either make another video or I can continue streaming you guys gotta let me know let me know in discord and if you want me to continue then I will if not then I'll just keep working a little bit on my own so that I can get the projectile system working correctly I may actually do a line tray system instead uh, just so we have an effective shooting system but after we do that then we just need to start doing some health do some damage with our projectile and hell this will be ready for testing and we can actually be able to play in multiplayer and run around and shoot at each other. Sounds like a plan, right? So I want to try and keep relative. Again, may not work, but... Nah, not working. Still, the um, tweaking on this, whenever you, you're... You know, I'm shooting from the hip here. So... I guess the the best way to do it is to to get the camera rotation and get the, the location. Um, rotation. Let's see. Get target rotation as camera boom. We don't want that. Add local rotation for ADS camera. Get socket rotation ADS camera. Yeah, whatever. Let's, let's just try that. So we need to move some things around here. Actually, you don't need to. We can just do this because we're just going to test it. If it doesn't work, then I'm going to delete it anyway. So technically, what I'm wanting it to do is detect the rotation in yaw, like so. And that worked. How about that? So the next thing to do is to actually... You see I'm firing these uh, projectiles and they're not uh, going away they're just staying there so we need to go into our projectile base and event begin play is probably what we want to work with because whenever it begins whenever it begins to live um, just try to do on um, set lifespan to well, I don't know. We'll we'll try three seconds. And let's do this one more time. Grab our rifle, bang, projectile, and it. There we go. Now we're not going to want to shoot <laughs> rapid fire with a musket, so. You're going to want to have a delay in the, the time to fire. But you see, it has a nice drop to it. And that's something that can be adjusted as well. So I guess what we can do in the next video is I will actually go ahead and start setting up a health system for the character and a damage system for the projectiles. And, yeah, I might even throw in some effects so that um, whenever you get hit by the projectile or you see it hit it makes something happen or whatever or add collision I'm gonna to have to add collision to the projectile I'm pretty sure but it's nice we now have a working
projectile system that is based off of where we're looking and yeah in an hour and a half's time we went from nothing whatsoever to a working multiplayer game where we can run around we can jump we can aim we can shoot lovely see all right so thank you guys for watching and we'll pick it up in the next video and start doing some damage literally I guess we'll see you shortly.